Hi, my name is Alison Lockhead um, and I live in Mid Wales. I'm an artist, um, primarily a sculptor, and my work is really a, around the impact of war and uh, you know, its ongoing consequences for um, both the environment and particularly for people that have to suffer. Um, I wonderfully show my work in Canvas Gallery in Cardigan, um, which is here from October the 2nd until October the 30th. So it would be lovely to see you here. Okay, in the downstairs space um, in the gallery, I'm showing work, really there's pieces um, that are made out of bones and they're made into boats. And they're refugee boats, they're the boats that refugees are coming in, you know, to try and find safety. Um, and they sort of, they're, they're sort of representing the fact that so, so many never make it. So it's the bones of the boats and the bones of the people um, within the boats. Um, so I'm showing a variety um, of things that are actually ceramic, um, but they, they are part of a, a much bigger installation, but they, they stand alone as well. So ceramic and cast iron. And then on the walls, um, I always work with backbones and ribs. It's sort of something that stays throughout all my work, one way or another. You know, if you look at the, you know, the, the, you know, the ribs of a boat, for example. Um, so these are actually just working drawings that I've done. Um, sheep's skeletons, really. There's always had it on a farm, and um, there's usually one hanging about somewhere. So um, that's what these drawings are about down here. This piece of work, again, it's around refugees um, and their journeys that they have to make, which are incredibly perilous. Um, but this is made out of, I also do printmaking, so I'm a, I do holograph printing. So th this is actually um, a print, and then I've got little, refu little boats, and then this is cast iron, um, sort of put, put together to make, to make the whole. So it's a story of, a story of refugees again. And th this piece is um, it's, it's, again, it's, it's a boat, and it's a completely collapsed boat, and it's made out of bones, um, completely made out of bones, um, and, uh, but also within it are, are books that I have burnt, because one of the other things I'm, I work on a lot is the uh, bombing of libraries and the destruction of people, I, I, people sorry, identities. Um, when you know somebody like ISIS, for example, will try and just destroy documents that don't, they don't agree with. Um, this has been happening throughout history. This isn't anything new, but it is happening quite a lot um, to this day. So these are bird books um, within a boat, which is made out of bones, um, which is in complete disarray. I mean, it's 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 wrecked. Yes. So it's, this is really around the destruction of people's identities. So following on from the, um, the boat that we saw downstairs, um, this room is, um, again, the, the burning of books and the destruction of libraries. So the two paintings on the wall um, represent burning libraries and then the destruction of all the books within. And the, actually, the sculptures that are here, um, I've worked extensively in the Middle East and in Palestine and various, all, all over the place, actually. Um, and I had a, quite a big library of books on the Middle East conflicts over time. And all of these books are about, they're from my library, um, and they're about the Middle East wars. And, and and some other wars. And what I do, I, I, as a sculptor, I work in, I've got a huge kiln and I've also got a cupola for melting iron. So these, I would put the, the books in a sand mould and then I pour, so they'd be contained, I then pour molten iron into the sand mould. So some of the book would burn away, some would become iron, Others disappear altogether. So this this is what's left of any individual book that I put in a mould. So many people try and destroy different people's identities, 
Um, and one of a very powerful way of doing it is through destroying libraries and books. Um, so this is, represents, represents that. And this image in the back here is actually, I've also done quite a lot of big installation pieces with burnt bookcases that are, again, full of books from my library. Um, and then I burn them. And it's one of the hardest things I think I have ever done, is setting fire to books. Um, and that's just a photograph of um, one of the, when I was doing that, because I would film it as well. So that's what that was about. Um, this, this is a, another of the, the, what I call the bone ghost boats. Um, again, made out of bones, or, or the little ceramic, ceramic balls that are here, that should represent people. Um, and it's back to, yeah, just um, so many thousands and thousands of people lose their lives trying to find safety and having to do unimaginable journeys in order to uh, try and find somewhere to harm themselves. So that's what this is about. All of my um, working life, really, I've been a sculptor. Uh, I haven't really worked in paint before, hardly at all. You know, lots of drawings and um, you know that, that sort of work on two dimensions. But um, but there was an image. I've, I've been working in refugee camps in Greece and Calais, and there was a, one particular image that I was wanting to represent. Uh, which I just couldn't do in sculpture. I couldn't work out how to do it. And it was three young men who were disappearing into the mist. Um, and I knew they were going to their tent, which was in Scrubland in Calais. And this was April and it was miserable and just awful. And I just wanted to get, capture that image. I still haven't done that image. But the only way I could think to do it was in paint. And um, so I started painting. And this was a year last March, just coincidental since then lockdown. So for the whole of lockdown, I actually just produced paintings. Um, so I think I'm on my 60th at the moment. Um, loving getting back into colour, absolutely loving it. Um, but all the paintings are around war and the impact of war. Um, and some are on the very specific events that have happened during the, the year. So, for example, um, there's a piece on Gaza, which was when Israel bombed Gaza last year. Was it last year? The, the days, times go, go a bit mad. So that, <clears throat> I did a whole series of, around that. And then there's three pieces on the walls here which show um, around the explosions in Beirut, when there was that massive explosion, um, which is highly dubious altogether, um, what it was. So there's three paintings around that. And other paintings are really about bombed out buildings, um, the aftermath of people that are left behind. Um, so and often the people still have to live in these buildings. So there's one where if you look carefully, you'll see some washing still hanging up where people are still living. Um, and then, you know, other ones um, here. It's really, it started out as a library, actually, and then became, I don't know what, and I very purposefully distorted the perspective. Um, and then, for me, it became, and the, the reason for the birds in that, I've actually been doing a lot with, with birds in a lot of the other paintings. But there was a description, when I was doing the work on the bombed out libraries, actually, one of the reasons I was doing, started doing that, was there was a, a description of the Aleppo library when it was bombed, and that it rained the, you know, the, the ash from the books for three days. And having read quite extensively about different bombed out libraries or bomb, you know, bombing of libraries, that's, that's common. Three days seems to be, you know, either when, how long the fires rage or, or that it just come, comes down from the sky still. And somebody had written a poem um, that that's like blackbirds falling out of the sky. 
So that was, although I was using blackbirds for other reasons before, but that was why I put, put them in here. But actually, it didn't become a library in the end at all. I mean, for me, this became torture chambers. And what you do behind closed doors, one we all watch. So we know what's going on in these places, and we just don't, don't act. And, um, yeah, we look at yeah, with impunity, really, allow these things to happen. So those are the, the paintings in this area. Good. In the front room um, of the gallery, um, there's a the variety of things, but it's really about the refugee camps. So the paintings represent the refugee camps, and not only that they're you know, the camp, it's actually then what you're moving to. So in the big painting in the background, you know, you're moving from one hell to another very often, where you know, you're really not welcomed, you're not wanted. And these ones are actually called wait, the weight of waiting because people are in limbo for years and years and years and the weight of that on, on everything, on your mental health, your everything, your hope, your, you know, your feeling of, you know, the future is, is desperate. So that's what um, the, these particular paintings are about. And then the shoes are around when you find an abandoned shoe, just one abandoned shoe, um, who's been wearing it, what's its story, why is it abandoned, where's the wearer? Um, and there's been no refugees um, and people trying to seek safety walk for thousands of miles, sometimes certainly hundreds, um, and things happen on the way. Um, a lot of a lot of people don't make it, um, but their shoe might be left behind. Um, so these are the shoes that are again put into a sand mold, molten iron poured into them, and some of the shoe might stay. It might disappear altogether. Um, it's become iron. It's they they each come out very very differently and tell their own story. Um, so that's what these shoes represent. So it's like just what what do you think about when you see an abandoned shoe? Whose was it? And then I've also um, in this room there's a figure who's made out of cast iron. And then again, I, I have a cupola at home, and she was made out of straw. So um, the whole world was was made out of straw, encased in sand. And then when I pour iron on, that's she then becomes iron. So it's again about the, the changing. You know, you you are one thing, but then you become something very different. Um, or I, I do a lot of work with the skeleton and backbones and ribs. Um, for me, the backbone represents um, a strength, but it's also our weakest part of our body as well. And we often think of, you know, a, a, an iron backbone being very strong, but actually it's not. It's very brittle and you can just bash it and it'll shatter, and it's not flexible. Um, and I had intended to put a paper backbone in this particular figure because they are very flexible and incredibly strong. Um, but that happens in the, another figure and not this one. But um, that, that was the sort of idea behind this. Um, and the drawing is really, it's not directly connected at all, but it's just working drawings that I do. Um, and I just love life drawing, so I will spend it. Um, not enough time, but I, I do like drawings and I just thought it would be quite fun to show some of those. So these are very, very quick, yeah, five drawings that I love doing.